I am currently running a custom recipe over here that's doing something pretty cool. Notice what happens when I annotate. I'm just going to annotate a couple of random examples, but then I'm going to hit the save button over here. This is going to send a batch of annotations back to my Prodigy server and watch what happens here. The moment I hit save, a table appears. And you'll notice that if I were to label a little bit more, save again, that then the table updates. So what is this table keeping track of? Well, it's keeping track of the time in this session, and it's also keeping track of how often I hit accept, reject, and skip. And this, combined with the time so far, can give me an estimation of how many annotations per hour I'm able to do. And that can be very useful because it tells me how long I might need to be annotating for. Now, the way that I've implemented this is by leveraging the update callback inside of Prodigy. And what I would like to do in this video is explain to you how you can build this yourself. And in doing so, I also hope to explain how this update callback works. So let's first have a look at the recipe. This is the custom recipe in question. It is a function that has this prodigy.recipe decorator over it. And as expected, we are returning a dictionary with some required keys and values. We are providing a data set, a view ID, as well as a stream of items to annotate. But we also added a update key over here and we have attached a method. Now this update method over here is attached to this object called pTable, which is an instance of a custom class that I wrote. And the task of this class is to keep track of both the time as well as the counts and to also generate a pretty table uh, whenever we run update. So let's have a quick look at that implementation as well. So there we are. When an object of this class is created, I first make sure that the current time is stored. That way I can calculate the time difference. And I also have a dictionary over here that just allows me to keep track of all the different counts. Now, if I scroll down to the bottom over here, you can see the actual update method, this one. And this is also the method that I'm referring to down below here. So what does this method receive? Well, it gets this list of dictionaries called examples, and each dictionary in that list represents a fully annotated example. In our specific case, the main relevant thing is that it also has a key that's referring to the answer. That is to say, did we accept it, ignore it, or reject it? And by using a list comprehension here, I can count how many examples I've seen in this new batch of annotations that have been accepted, and I can update my dictionary accordingly, and I can do that for the rejections and for the examples that I chose to ignore as well. And now that the state has been updated, I am calling the self make table method to generate a table, and then I am printing it below. You can have a look at this code yourself. The link to the code is in the show notes. Um, but effectively, the main logic that's running here is I'm using this library called rich inside of Python uh, to just make sure that I'm rendering a very pretty table. And when you put all of these things together, you basically get a recipe that will update every time it sees a new batch of annotations. And in this case, I'm using it to give me a little bit of feedback that tells me how fast I am annotating but you can also imagine that there are other worthwhile statistics to keep track of. Now, as a final note, what I'm doing here with this update mechanic is just one example of what you could do. You could calculate statistics, but what you can also do here is update a machine learning model. And in fact, this update method is typically used inside of Prodigy to update its own machine learning models in order to handle active learning. However, that also means that nothing is stopping you from using your own favorite active learning implementation for your own task. And that is going to be especially useful if you're working on non-text data that can't leverage spacey models for active learning.